Okay, guys, so welcome everybody. It's being recorded from now on. It's great to be with you again. And uh, just before we start the webinar, I just want to tell you that this webinar has been organized by the weekly fasting group. It's a group of individuals from all over the world. It's a WhatsApp group. And this group is dedicated to cultivating the habit of fasting once a week. So we fast every week between Friday and Saturday for 24 hours on a consistent basis. Some people do it for spiritual reasons, other for physical reasons. So each person has their own reasons, but it's a very big group from people from all over the world who cultivate this habit. And we also have discussions and webinars about spirituality, about uh, cleansing, about, um, uh, about health, healing, etc. So if you are watching this video later on, you will find my phone number, my WhatsApp number. My name is Arik. I'm the moderator of this group. And if those ideas appeal to you, you can send me your WhatsApp message with your name and I'll happily add you to this group in order to cultivate this amazing habit of abstinence from food every week for 24 hours. Guys, and I must tell you that today we have a super special topic about birth, pregnancy, everything that is related to raising children on the fasting slash pranic lifestyle. And it's the topic that I have wanted to bring in to our group for, for a long time and today, my dream is coming true. So today we have two amazing speakers. We have Mariam. Uh, where, where do you live currently? In London? Yes, I live in yeah, London. United yeah, Kingdom. excellent. And you're from, or you're originally from where? Of France. Well, my dad is Indian. I was born in a French island called Reunion Island next to okay. Mauritius. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So we have uh, Mariam and we have Daniela from Italy, right? Rafaela from Italy, yes. <laughs> Excellent. So we'll start with Mariam. And Mariam is a fresh mom, right? Like, a, when did you become a mom? In 2021, February. So my oh. baby will turn a year old in a few days on the 11th. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. That is, that, that is so sweet. Do you have a boy or a girl? A girl. It's a girl. Uh, what's her name? Anya. Anya. Wow. That's a sweet name. That's a sweet mm -hmm. name. Okay, Mariam, so over to you. I just want to tell you guys that we usually start with a short meditation, but today we are limited in time, so we'll get right away to our subject. So please, Mariam, over to you. Sure. Um, so I share about how to live a more nourishing, energizing, and prosperous life, as I like to say, and this mainly through um, fasting, moving, and enjoying, slash meditating, enjoying your life and meditating. To me, that's, that goes together because I feel like you can only really meditate and live in mindfulness when you enjoy your life and when you live in happiness. So I, that's my lifestyle. I started fasting the first time in 2002 and then regularly ongoing in 2012, meaning every day, at least intermittent fasting, and then several times a week, I would just fast out of living a life that is nourishing because my lifestyle, I, I focused on how is it possible to live a life that makes you happy, that isn't draining in energy, that doesn't waste so much energy and that creates value for yourself and the world? And to me, that's the key, to be able to have more energy and therefore, as a consequence, eat less food and fast more naturally. So I share that. And I found that through movement, for me, it's dancing, and through being creative, that is, to me, the key. And sharing this with the world is the key to live a nourishing life that consequently allows you to have more capacities or what some people call powers and then allows you to, to choose to choose whether to eat or not eat whether to sleep more or less whether to do things with your talents and that goes along with also um talents that are sensorial capacities or other senses that are developed highly de more developed in other words yeah if you have a question, then I will answer the question. Wow. wow. So how do you do that? Like, what, what, what are your keys to living this kind of lifestyle where you get nourished by happiness rather than physical food? The keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh. keys, like, like, yeah, like what, what are your methods of achieving that? 
Okay, physical is moving the body. You need to you need to constantly be active. Doesn't mean crazy active, but you need to constantly be walking or um, paint, doing something creative with your body. And therefore, kind of your mind, you use your mind in a creative way, not to think only about how to solve problems or how to pay the bills or how you don't think about these things. But instead, let's say if you are someone who loves uh, nature, then you go for walks, you go for hikes, you create groups where you walk together, you create seminars, you create boot camps, you do these things ongoing. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. as a consequence, you will always live in prosperity, abundance, and you won't think so much about um, time going, money, all these things that are worrying so much our culture today. And that leads us to live lives that are so lives of, of slavery. So instead, focus on what you love really and do that just like children it's really easy for us mothers or parents to see it or I feel like it's easier because if we observe our children they play they go from one activity to another one they don't stop they Absolutely. they may stop to like stare at things and we can do that called like meditation or mindfulness but you do these things anyway when you create when you walk when you uh, take time to pamper yourself you do these things anyway and then when it comes to maybe bedtime, then that's the time maybe there's more silence around you. And then that's maybe an ideal time to meditate as well. But it's just easier if you focus. My kids will be focusing on moving your body, enjoying life, thinking about ways to enjoy your life more, do what you love. And it's different for everybody. And then you share that. You can't be on your own with no connect, not connecting with the other, um, other people in the world. Right, and right to share that with other people through sharing and connecting there's a huge amount of energy exchange that will lead you to be happier and how they feel like you have more of a meaningful life and, and you create value this way for the world around you that that's massive that creates a lot of energy mm -hmm. and therefore nourishment my kids are this moving your body being creative enjoying and sharing wow wow there is lots of wisdom in your words amazing and uh, Mariam, so before we delve into our main subject today, um, I also wanted to, to ask you, how do you keep a positive mindset despite uh, all the negativity that goes on around us now, especially nowadays? Right. What, what are your yeah. secrets? Okay, it's going to be the same thing. Focusing on create, being creative, what you love, and pampering yourself as well. I'm going to give you examples. For me, I love to do videos. I love to dance. I love to uh, take walk in nature, um, meet my baby in the carrier. I share those things that I like with her anyway, with my child. But when you do these things, you don't think about other things. You don't think about the time. You don't think about the money. You don't think about what's going on around because you focus on the positive anyway. You get like, you, you have new eyes allowing you to see what's exactly aligned to your frequency. So you don't really focus on any, see, we, you have to see things this way. We are creators. So right. there's different levels in life. You can be at a level where, yes, you see the negativity. Yes, you see the poverty. Yes, you see the um, sickness. Yes, you see um, the darkness. But at a lot of level, you don't see any of these things. Like for instance, during COVID for me, I never was asked to take a jab. I never was asked to uh, do a test. I never was asked to wear a mask. Never these things were um, told to me because I live in my own world. In my own world, these don't exist. I live in freedom already. My work, I create my own prosperity. So I don't depend on a job external where people tell me what to do. They, this doesn't exist. Therefore, my rules in my world are very different from someone else's reality. See, that's how I created my reality. We all choose. Wow. Our mind is just so powerful, we can choose, okay? Just like we choose where we want to live. We can change if we don't like the country, the weather, the rules. It's, it's the same thing. We just have to take responsibility for our own reality. And then the, the rest will match. So, wow, that is amazing. So, so encouraging. Thank you so, so much. It's amazing right. what you have just said. Okay, Mariam, so let's just, uh, because we are limited in time, we, we have received quite a lot of questions. So let's just go question by question, and then uh, we'll see where it leads. So the first question, uh, it was, was like that. Uh, how was your routine from the moment you discovered you are pregnant in relation to eating and water intake? Okay, such a good question. You know what? Whatever is your routine before should stay your routine after unless you feel like there's an exception to this. When you do become pregnant, you have another living being in your body. 
that means someone else who already kind of have once, and that means you don't have the full control over your body. So sometimes you may suddenly get tired. Sometimes you may suddenly have a huge burst of energy. Sometimes you <laughs> suddenly want to stay home. Sometimes you may suddenly want to sleep because you don't have 100% the control over your body, shall I say, or as much control over your body as you were before being pregnant. But let's say I was already into fasting uh, before being pregnant. It didn't change when I was pregnant. I was already um, moving, dancing, doing a lot of activity when I was not pregnant. It didn't change when I was pregnant. Actually, I danced till the day, just before the day I gave birth and I was streaming all my dance uh, on uh, uh, social media so people can see. So it doesn't change. Whichever is your lifestyle before, should remain your lifestyle during your pregnancy because that's going to be even duplicate the power of whatever you were doing is going to be immensely um, empowered even more because you have another being inside of you who is kind of encouraging this anyway and the wow. being that choosing you for this exact lifestyle you were having so this is going to be more empowered like ripple effects you see but mm -hmm, yeah, the mm -hmm. reason that is, that means you, you don't have the full control over your body. And that means sometimes it's just emotionally things that just happens. But my life, I didn't change. I was still fasting at least half a week, but really every day I was doing intermittent fasting. And sometimes I would have snacks at the end of the day or juices or fruits, things like that mostly. Water, I did drink a bit more. I felt like being pregnant, you, you've, I felt like I wanted more water. I think because also there's so much, your baby basically is living in water and maybe mine was just, I don't know. I feel like water is kind of helping you on the past to flush more, to, yeah, because you're flushing not for one, <laughs> you're flushing for two living beings inside. I felt that this way for me. It's different for everybody. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so, so in terms of the amounts, what was your water intake more or less on, the, on an average well, day? Deeper. when you live more in freedom you don't really count all of this so much but water intake maybe a liter like i didn't i wasn't really doing at the very beginning i may have done some dry fasting but then i wasn't so i was maybe drinking a liter maybe less i'm not mm. too sure to i haven't counted but okay. i don't think it's different from any normal person that drinks and eats i guess for the water aspect yeah okay okay cool cool okay then another question was your doctor aware, as a kind of funny question, was your doctor aware of your fast life, fasting lifestyle during your pregnancy? Absolutely not. And I don't <laughs> really encourage people to share because that's your journey. You know that other people may live in another reality and then may say something. If you just want to stay in peace, you might as well just share the positive aspect. Or did you, I wasn't even sharing anything. The doctor just looked at the results and said, oh, everything is really good when there was all the testing and checkups. So that was fine. You don't need to say anything when they see that everything's good. They just actually tell you, keep doing whatever you're doing. And they don't even ask because they only ask if it's bad or if it's not the, the figures on what they want them to be, I guess. Right. I was fine. Right. That's amazing. Okay, then the next question. Um, what was the major benefit from this lifestyle during your pregnancy? um energy and joy this kind of the same as before also oh yeah one major one is the way you communicate with your baby in the womb that is that was the most amazing definitely i was okay i was about to forget about this one the way you communicate in terms of um uh non-verbal communication it's mm -hmm. just such a bond because your senses are so more expanded uh, due to your lifestyle than it's like you already talk, but like, for instance, she was, if I, if I needed to wake up at a certain time and I was asking, would you, like, I was kind of collaborating with her when she was in my womb to wake me up at a certain time. And she would always do that. Or wow. if I wanted to, I was going, let's say I wanted to move house at a kind of later stage in pregnancy. And that was a bit stressful for me because of the, you know, whatever I, I just felt really stressed and then she did help me as well because i did ask basically you in the room you you will have such a, a strong partnership and collaboration with your uh, little one that is the most amazing part people forget about this but you have a being that is so pure hasn't been uh you know uh, touched mentally or like there's no um boundaries 
between the, the you and that baby's mind yet because it's not actually yet corrupted i would say or no, mm-hmm. or uh, impacted by anything from the outside so right. that is so so powerful because if you realize what creates boundaries for us in our lives or um, limitations is the way that our mindset it's our mindset mm-hmm. only so if you kind of remove that part if it was possible then there's no limit wow. so imagine a baby in the woods there's no limit so if you mm-hmm. partner with that living being at that stage it's just it's amazing what you can do together it's just amazing the, wow wow the so could you give a few examples how it got expressed the, like this uh, what what you have just said yes, to manifest things um there's so many as i say it could be silly things like uh waking up at a certain time um when you create a, when you work on a project the way the project will unravel with the help of that being you will have bigger ideas faster wow. you will become like smarter yeah wow. become very fast <laughs> yeah i know it's yeah, very fast and in a way that you don't, you won't have to work so much on something to make it happen. Okay. So you have a partner and that partner is limitless. Is it? Wow. So you imagine what you can get. It's just yeah. amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Then the next question um, How was your baby's, how's your baby's health after birth? Oh, she was, from day one, she was, she was always, always been fine. I don't, I'm thinking about, no, she's never had a, she was born so from home. I had no uh, medical staff or assistance. Um, I had some of my family members in the living room, but I was in the bathroom on my own. And she just came with no push uh, in, in a few hours. And I had, you know, no tearing, nothing. And she was just like there, fine with, you know, no, anything external. No, <laughs> there was nothing, no medication, no medical staff. She just came like that. So wow. I don't know. She was fun from day one. So yeah. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. So encouraging. Yeah, so encouraging. Okay. Then the next one. What's your suggestion from someone that does dry fasting regularly? It's, it should be for someone who does dry fasting regularly or just one meal a day without water intake. Should they continue doing that during the pregnancy? Okay. So if you were doing this before, anything you were doing before. And you feel fine doing during pregnancy, then yes, my answer is yes. Your lifestyle shouldn't change because you become pregnant, unless, as I said, the exception of that being in your body pushing you to do slightly different. But otherwise, you should just carry on. Now, I'll just do a little bracket on the um, dr- okay, not drinking water, but eating. I would think that when you eat, that goes with drinking water because that when you eat, then you kind of put solid food in your body and to help out flushing faster, drinking is necessary or it helps better because otherwise it's gonna stay longer in your body and that that can create imbalance, but it's only my experience and the one of other people I work with who are so-called breatharians. But again, it's up to everybody. If you, I guess if people eat um, smoothies or veggies or fruits, that might be okay. But usually when you eat, you need a drink. It goes hand in hand. But to answer the question, um, yeah, you should carry on during your pregnancy. Whatever was your lifestyle before pregnancy, providing it was healthy. Wow. Uh, Amazing. Healthy. Amazing. Healthy. Okay. Thank you so much. Another question, next one. Are you raw or vegan on the non-fasting days? Okay. Uh, I was vegetarian for 20 years and then I became vegan. So the answer is yes. I would say that I had, so after the whole, I basically went uh, decrescendo, as we say in in Italian, decrescendo. Um, So you go through like, I wasn't really eating meat because I grew up, I'll come back to this in a minute, but I wasn't really eating meat as a child anyway. So then when I was 12, 2000, I guess it was, 2002, I'm not sure, 2000, I think, I became a vegetarian because my mom became vegetarian. And then 12 years after, I decided to go vegan. That was because I wanted to do a specific type of meditation that where the master was asking for the disciples to go vegan, okay? And uh, then I carried on. And at some point, I realized there was something I wasn't fully happy about. And then I checked so I went through all the, then raw vegan, then only smoothies, the, the whole, you know, process of the unfooding, I would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you go at the end of this, you realize, okay, I'm not hungry anymore. I don't, you realize you don't really need to um, eat all this food anyway. And you feel like you have a lot of energy. So then you question 
Why would I only have raw vegan if I don't need that food anyway? And if health for me is fasting, you see? Mm -hmm. So then you question and you realize what, you realize it's a mind process. You realize a mind has some kind of desires and you question where they come from and why. So for me, I realized, so after all this process, after 25-ish years, um, I grew up in poverty as a child. And for me, I didn't realize that subconsciously, I associated things like meat and fish with being rich because I didn't okay. have that as a child because we were poor, so we couldn't afford meat, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like naturally, it's not naturally, but for me, this is very, very, very different for every individual. Some people, they may have memories around fruits, is they associate fruits and vegetables with poverty because they had that and they were poor and they had nothing else. It depends on everyone. Some may associate um, maybe bread with lack of love because when they were punished, they had a slice of bread for dinner. You see, it's everybody's story is different. But my right. story was, and how I perceived it rather, was, okay, meat is for rich people. We can't afford, we don't have it. And so I realized for me to heal my mind kind of and finish my process, I went back for a little bit on eating these things that I honestly don't like at all and were just disgusting to me. But because my mind, I felt like needed this in the process to heal, I went back to this. I went, not even back, I went to something I never had before. So I tried stuff, like, I won't even name because I feel really, it was just really well. But at least I tried them, my mind was happy, and then I, I could move on. It's a bit like children. Sometimes you give, in, you give them one food, they like it the first time, then you give them another time, they don't want it. They had the experience, they enjoy it, they're fine, they want to move on. And we right. forget to do that. We forget to have an experience, maybe our mind wants it, and then move on, move on. Okay, I tried this piece of pizza. It was nice, let me move on. We stick on, on two things. Let's have the pizza every Saturday. Or let's, why would you do that? If your mind is satisfied, you have, well, just move on. You know, you're not a slave to a certain type of food. Absolutely, so absolutely. I think it's an important part of understanding ourselves and our past with our relationship with food and past memories and kind of heal instead of pushing ourselves or kind of implementing labels on ourselves that prevent us to really put us, our, our health and safety first because it's all about that and then we will go insane or or unwell or unhealthy because we absolutely want to stick to vegan we absolutely want to stick to raw vegan when really if you know that health is no food anyway so don't, don't bother go through whatever stage you need to go through but then have enough freedom and mastery to move away from that when you need to that's wow funny. wow amazing wonderful such an inspiring answer and what about now like nowadays are you a would you consider I would say, well because my child is a vegetarian she eats like um things like i don't drink milk but she eats cheese so some, you know, with children, that's another story. When you have children, you're going to be around food all the time, probably as long as this, especially toddlers and babies. So if she has a piece of whatever cheese and she hand it over to me, then I'm, for me, I know this is a, her life experience. So I want to be part of it. So I don't mind sacrificing to have a bite of something she has because I, I've chosen that. I've chosen to sacrifice in order to have yeah. her here. Like that's how I see it, I guess. And uh, so I, I wouldn't really put a label on me, but I would say vegetarian curry is more matching my current life. Although yeah. I, don't, I only snack sometimes. So for me, it's another, it's a path of food freedom. So I don't put labels on this because again, you eat for other reasons. You, you don't eat because you need it. You eat because if you have a child, then you share the, the, the experience of the child. If you have uh, play dates, if you have gathering with other parents, then you may have a bite of something because it's socially like, you know, the the part of it. You you choose yeah. to, to do this part of it. Um, but doesn't mean, you know, I would I would go, I don't go to rest, I, I don't do these things that people do. I don't uh sit and have a plate of food. I don't do these things really. I, I do that when I, I socialize and when I'm with a family, but otherwise it's another story for me. So I would yeah, if I answer a question, I would say vegetarian is my wow. but yeah. if I own my own, then there's none of this. But because uh, you see what you understand the point? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Especially yes. I created, yeah. Yes, right. yes, you conveyed it really, really clearly. Thank you so much. Then the next question. Uh, did your diet provide all the nutrients that you and your developing baby needed 
such as sufficient uh, quality of nutrients like folate, vitamin B12, omega-3 fats, uh, iron, iodine, calcium, and zinc, all of which are especially important during pregnancy. So that's the question. Yeah, sure. And that's very important to also, well, I guess when you choose to have a baby then, and you choose to go for uh, all the checkups and the kind of medical accompaniment, people still being around then, you need to play the game of this and accept that this is part of the process so you, you you should be matching the level of this some people choose not to believe in that some people choose to accept because whatever they're going to sacrifice for um yeah every as i said all the checkups went really really well and they all said oh keep doing whatever you're doing oh this is really good the only is that was i think the last very very last month before she was born the iron went a little bit lower which is for most women, this is what happens, um, but still it was uh, at a good rate. It wasn't beyond the um, limit. So mm -hmm. it just went lower than before, but it wasn't bad or like bad in certain sense of like lower than the actual, you know, amount that they recommend. If you right, see right. Everything but, was fine, yeah. Right, but did, you, fine. but did you did you take any supplements during oh, pregnancy? Oh, no, I did, no, 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 I didn't. And the, I would say that, Again, the key is to have a nourishing life. And, and it, I don't mean that taking supplements is bad or not okay. I just mean that if you feel like uh, you, you want to take them, just have them. It depends to which level you want to, I would say, play the game or sacrifice or, or take part in whichever reality you live in. Mm. You, but it's okay to take supplements if you feel like. Or if yeah. you choose that it's maybe um, you're aware that it's not a life matching your current full potential mm -hmm. therefore to have this as a helper temporarily it's okay i did take supplements in my life i you know it happened uh, yeah it happened a few times and i i even recommend it for people who stop fasting because most people go really fast on the path and don't realize that their bodies need to adjust usually so the you know everybody's different but again they go and so for a lot of people it's actually useful and then it's Maybe you start fasting, you take some supplements, and then you go lower. And then when your you, your body is more used to, then you just say goodbye to the supplements. But yes, it depends where you are at. It's it's okay to take supplements. In my, that's my message. But I mm -hmm. was fine without because mm -hmm. I was aware of what I needed to work on. The mindset yes. of being active, you know, living this life where you you follow your creativity and your joy, moving when you know you need to move. Don't wait and stay in a place where you don't feel happy, you don't like it you know, just go with the flow. <laughs> wow, wow, amazing. Mariam, and uh, uh, so would you say that your your general food intake during pregnancy was bigger than before pregnancy or you know, it didn't change at all? No, it, it was a bit less, I think, to be honest. Um, really? Wow. Yeah, it was, uh, there was these odd occasions where, okay, the, the exception was when I needed to go outside to shops Things like very big malls that for me, I felt like was really draining. That's something when you have, I felt like when you're pregnant, everything that's draining your energy, making you tired, will make you tired a lot more. Mm -hmm. Because again, you have two living beings and you have one being that is very, very, con um, very, very, um, how shall I say, like a sponge when it comes mm -hmm. to energies and, and emotions and everything. So yes. you have around you all like those emotions. Absorbing, yeah, absorbing yes. energies, yeah exactly so be mindful of this so if i was going to big malls with loads of people you have to queue for a long time once i went to ikea oh never do that again i, I felt like i was going to faint or i went to view uh, a, a flat that was just painted and had no ventilation at all you need a lot of a good air quality when you're pregnant you re need really good air quality so if you go in a place where the air quality is so bad i felt that the only time i actually fainted because it, it was just too bad that's your body telling you and that, that other being inside of you move away from here change environments that's mm -hmm. something you should really pay attention to but in these occasions i would need to eat before because otherwise i felt too bad that was a way to i don't even how shall i explain that better i guess that was because that environment wasn't nourishing enough then i had to use something external from me mm. to help yeah 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 absolutely so that, yeah or doctor's appointments was the same thing i wouldn't i wouldn't eat in the morning but doctor's appointment i uh, if i was nine nine in the morning i would need to have i would take a little something 
otherwise mm -hmm. it was too bad the hospital area the, i don't know it's just i mean i know it was just too much but yeah mm, wow okay. thank you thank you so much for sharing yeah that's a very important information yeah uh, okay and then another question uh, did you face any major challenges uh, such as a uh, sweet slash salty cravings mood swings etc oh, okay uh cravings i had known the only cravings i had was for goods a cleaning smells <laughs> like I would want to clean my bathroom with products that smell nice, lavender, these things, uh -huh, and uh -huh. brushing my teeth. Oh, I would love to the feeling of brushing my teeth. Is really, really <laughs> good. Food cravings, no, at all. And uh, what else? Mood swings? Did I have mood swings? Uh, the odd ones, yes, but I don't think it was too bad. Considering women naturally kind of had mood, mood swings anyway, I don't feel like I had anything really major. So mm -hmm. I would say no. Uh, the last one was Muslim craving. Yeah, no, there was no. That's again, if you, it's about your lifestyle, I guess. I don't really believe in cravings anyway, just like I didn't believe in pushing a baby out to give birth. So it didn't exist for me. Mm, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Then another question. So you, you kind of touched this subject, but I will read it anyway, and maybe you will have something to add. So. How did you meet your protein needs during pregnancy? Did you have things like protein powders with stevia, fermented foods, and monk fruit, which are considered safe and don't impact blood sugar levels? That's the oh, question. Okay, good point. Um, again, as I said, it depends on what you believe and your mindset more. So that's something that's only for me. Every individual is different. And the mindset is something that takes work to change. But for me, as I said, as I, I didn't believe in things like um, pushing a baby out or things like um, mood swings or cravings. Therefore, they did not exist in my reality. The same as protein. I feel like no matter what you eat or no matter what, you can get proteins in other ways. And for me, the nourishment comes from living a life that is meaningful and, and creates joy. So I felt like my lifestyle was what would provide me with sufficient nutrients anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where my protein came from, I guess. Mm, okay. You probably question this, so therefore it doesn't exist. If you question things and you're worried about something, then it will become your reality. That's as fast as this in the mind. It's right. really hard to explain more than whatever you believe or you feel full of, you, you make it enter in your reality because whatever you focus your attention on, you make it alive. So yeah. whether you're afraid or whether you want something so much, it's you, somehow it's going to appear in your reality or whether you don't want something at all and you keep thinking about it it will be there because it will exist in your world you see the mm -hmm. thoughts are a lot more powerful uh, than the physical uh, realities actually yeah the sources it's just they're ongoing yeah yeah okay cool okay guys so we, we have pretty, pretty much covered all the questions that we have received previously uh, in the group now we will open the microphone and if you have any more questions for Mariam, please feel free, just unmute yourself and ask your questions. If not, then I will ask something, but let's give. So guys, do you have any questions? Hey, Ravital. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask, hello. Um, I suffered when I was pregnant. Um, I, I suffered from nausea and uh, sick and vomited and all that. And uh, how do you, uh, is, is that because of not, uh, uh, back then I wasn't aware of all the ve uh, raw vegan stuff. I was vegetarian, but not raw vegan. So is that got to do with uh, eating the wrong foods that you're feeling very sick and vomiting? Okay, that is a good question because this happens to so many women, especially at the beginning. And it did happen to me, the nauseous aspect, I didn't vomit ever, never, but I did feel nauseous at the beginning and kind of tired. And that's with the body adjusting to a new experience. So let's say you're getting a new living being inside of you. That's wow, that's, that's crazy, that's amazing. So your body needs to adjust. And then it's also those unconscious belief we will have around being pregnant or being coming mothers that kind of lead to that effect. So it's not the food you were taking. It doesn't matter that, I believe, to my 
perspective and reality. But what does my, what you can do when this happens is to focus your attention on something completely different. Uh, do a lot of breathing techniques. Take maybe drink, to start with, drink something that has a little flavor in your mouth so that temporarily you forget about the nauseous feeling because I know in the mouth it's terrible when we have this uh, nauseous feeling. The, the, the feeling in the mouth is like that. <laughs> it's, and, and it's got, it can be ongoing. It's really, really strong. But And then it's to focus your attention on other things and move your body. It's doing the opposite of what we naturally want to do, stay there, do nothing, lay down. It's, it's completely the opposite. So we need to go out and have a walk. We need to look at things. We need to constantly keep our mind busy so that we forget about this feeling so that eventually it goes away. It's hard. It seems hard, but that's the way to me it works. And it works with anything. Illnesses, um, worries, stress, all of this, same way. Focus your attention on something completely different and do the opposite of what your mind wants to do in that moment. Okay? Being active. It needs to be active. Engage the body and then it will engage your mind in something else. Do something that, but for me, it's like mostly you, I love dancing. So if I was dancing, I would forget about this. I would forget I was kind of, I thought I was tired, but I wasn't tired. It's a body adjusting to this new experience. Nauseous, yes, it feels like that, but again, it's the body adapting to something new. All the tissues, all the cells, everything inside is just adapting to a new experience. That's a huge process. So in the process, just like we go and detox, for instance, when you change diet, and if it happens to you, if we go from, let's say, a meat eater who goes through becoming a vegetarian, they may have diarrhea a lot. They may feel completely weak for a period of time. And if they focus on this, they will think, wait, that diet, that diet is not for me. It's terrible. Being a vegetarian makes me feel sick and have diarrhea and stuff. But it's not the diet itself. It's the transitioning to becoming another type of eater that leads to this. And it's a temporary experience. It's a temporary experience. And if instead of thinking about this, he was focusing on other things, then he, it would be easier for the body to adapt, okay, moving going for walks in nature, meditating, meditation, but it's hard to meditate when you feel nauseous because your mind will come back to this all the time. That's why I say engage the body and then the mind is something that's more challenging, that will make you think about something automatically, something different. But yeah, the transition period, because usually it lasts for, for me, it lasted for the first trimester and then it was gone. Most women, it's like that. It lasts for the first trimester, then it, it, it goes away because then the body has adapted that new situation and he's okay you see the same thing just think about this <laughs> this carnivore going through vegetarianism and feeling all these things going into the body oh about all these parts or all these uh, um colleagues and all these things but it's only temporary and it's a transition that you can help process through engaging the body and the mind in other activities to kind of grasp grasp your focus and get your focus into something else focus the mind power of the mind distract distraction or yeah. doing things that you, yeah exactly okay. this Thank exactly you. it's tricking the mind kind of it's that just like with babies you know you trick you kind of find strategies when they cry when they don't want to get dressed when it's the same thing with us we forget it's the same thing with our mind yeah the thing is i I wasn't aware of it and you know you know it stresses you it makes you feel very anxious what's wrong you know and that certainly adds to that and, and not exactly doesn't the problem. and yeah. also yeah now I'm more aware of other like other things like uh the right way to eat and how to make yourself feel good and not be uh anxious and worried so okay thank you very much thank you very yeah, much welcome. Thank yeah you. Mm -hmm. Mariam, I wanted to ask you about breastfeeding. How's it going in your case? And do you have enough milk and uh, things like that? Oh, yeah, that's a very important part. Okay, so again, that's very different to every individual. And I think that's the thing sometimes, especially in the um, spiritual communities or green or uh, vegan or anything kind of more consciously connected with the divine, we... Um, expect women to breastfeed for as long as possible. And, and we think that doing something different is bad. But the, we forget that the babies, they have their own path, the children, and they choose their own path and, and it's you know, up to them as well. 
So if I give my example, I was breastfeeding, there was no issues at all. And I think that's something, again, it's about our mindset. If we believe, oh, I will be lacking uh, milk because I am a vegetarian or a vegan or whatever, then we track that potentially and we create more stress and stress is, and breastfeeding is very difficult. The stress <laughs> doesn't help breastfeeding at all. And the more stress we have, the less we are able to breastfeed properly. So no good to be stressed. And mm -hmm. when you breastfeed you, woman, you should pamper yourself so much and do your best. It's not easy, I know. Um, to, to look after yourself and keep away all the chatters and all the whatever other people say, because what, what matters is only the way you feel and, and, and your connection with the baby at that time. But for me, I breastfed till she don't, didn't want anymore. So that some people will ask, how can she not want anymore? Well, I was also pumping, okay? So I was pumping milk and breastfeeding at the same time. So every two hours, I would either breastfeed her and or pump if she wasn't hungry oh after a little bit of time maybe two three months i guess my freezer was full because i was freezing the milk story of my life and so my freezer was full of frozen breast milk now the frozen breast milk only keeps three months i believe yeah and then it's not good anymore so after uh, a while after a, a few months before it started to go bad I um, told myself, okay, then I'm gonna try and give her frozen breast milk, but out of a bottle, because that's the only way to give them that. Hoping in my mind, I uh, will do both. I will breastfeed, breastfeed and give her a bottle of breast milk, right? <laughs> my point. And eventually she enjoyed the bottle more than the breast milk from my <laughs> actual breast. And she wouldn't want the breast anymore. So she was ready for the bottle. And eventually I had no more breast, frozen breast milk. So eventually she went on, um, I don't like to say, it, but it's true, artificial milk. But what else could I do? Because she just didn't want the breast anymore. So you can't force a baby to go on to something that they don't want. I felt like, you know, I was fine with it. I didn't, it wasn't a big deal. Um, children have their own paths. They're going to go through uh, food at school with their friends, things that we may not like but it's not about us, it's about them. And because I know about my childhood, me going back to meet after a long time after, because I didn't have that as a child and all my friends had this around me and I felt like I was the black sheep and I didn't like it. I know that in children's mind, it's not like our minds, they don't know. Uh, it's, it's another reality for them. They just want to share the joyful experience of eating with other people. They just want to share the joy of sharing something with other people, that's it. So for me, I feel like that's her past. She chose that and that's okay. So I breastfed for six months. Then she want, didn't want the, the breast anymore. So we switched for another then six months until she was, now she drinks mostly soy milk, almond milk, these vegan milks, because I feel like this is, she likes it. So why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that was the story. But some people are happy to breastfeed for a year or two. And that's great. Um, you know, I was happy for her to go independent and other people to take part in the feeding process because that's also a love exchange. It's always mm -hmm. more about the love anyway. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If I can, uh, yeah, if I can help women out there feel less guilty for <laughs> doing other things than just breastfeeding for years, <laughs> then I'm happy. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Okay, guys, do you have any more questions? You can just unmute yourself and ask. Okay, Mariam, uh, then uh, I will go on asking. So tell me now, uh, from your experience, if a couple wants a baby and have a, and they have difficulty conceiving a baby, how should they work with their minds in order to invite this being into the womb of the, of the mother? Oh. Um... If you, well, have a, if you have an answer for that. Of course, that is a very good question. Well, then it depends on every individual. What type of... Uh, it's going to be natural anyway, but it's kind of... Okay, you can focus on the joy and on unconditional love. That will always bring something, uh, I guess, suited to every couple. But anyway, whatever is the way you work on it, you will attract whatever you need to attract or whatever is suited to you anyway. I mm. think it's in which book there is, oh yes, um, The Masters of the Far East, from the far, is that the title? 
you know, this red book with the teachings from the master, masters from the Far East. I think that's how you called it in English. No, no I, I don't know this book. I'm not familiar with that. Okay, um, La Vie de Maître. It's a very good. You must have heard. It's really, really famous. Um, okay, you know, maybe. Think, yeah. Well, they do say in this book, it doesn't matter how a child has been conceived and how is even how um, whether it was consciously con you know conceived or not because in the end um the you know infinite power of the universe will send you what is aligned to you anyway so i would say that it's more of a work of um long-term work previous to it on your own self mm -hmm. and for both people and then um yeah then you will attract a, a, a being that is more suited to you but really I would say trust the universe and just focus on unconditional love. That's only mm. my reality, though. Yeah. Mm, who wow. you are you, is who you are. If you work on yourself, then that's that's your work, okay? Mm -hmm, just focus mm -hmm. on joy. But then some people are going to freak out and think, okay, oh, I have to do this. And then they will use their mind, put it in the way. And if you use your mind, it's, it's always going to be kind of a, a, a limit in the way and if you don't you, you don't leave your mind away leave your mind away focus yeah. on uh, unconditional love see yeah mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and so i can give right now wow okay 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 guys do you have any more questions okay mariam so um Maybe I will ask you the my last question, and then we will talk a little bit about you and the services that you provide and how you can help people, etc. In order for our group member to get to know you better, and maybe if they need your help to okay. come to you. So, um, so so could you um, first of all, I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask maybe even two questions. Uh, first of all, about the diet of the baby, like. Um, how, how do you go about that? What kind of foods do you give her, etc.? Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, as I maybe mentioned a bit before, the ba a baby isn't your belonging or mm -hmm. it's not your possession. So it's a being that comes here and have their own purpose and goals and their own liking. So for me, I feel like she's free to enjoy what she wants. And because I haven't created her alone, she has family members and it's not just a mom and a dad it's also the grandparents the uncles all those people around who are associated with you karmically i would say or with yeah. that being healthy. so um i feel like with me she would eat simple food and things that i noticed she likes if I, I try things like vegetables mostly um pasta rice whatever i guess simple <laughs> thing that i would call simple food and if she likes something i give her again i try but really and then she has her dad who would give her maybe other things that she will also like so it's kind of there's no rules if i notice something she doesn't like and i try it again and she doesn't like it it's really about the taste with babies and toddlers you can't tell them okay this is healthy have that <laughs> because as i said i don't believe in this myself anyway but if health comes from fasting and there's no such a thing as healthy food when you realize it's fasting no matter what you eat even junk food if yeah. you only eat a little bit and it's not ongoing you will be healthier than someone who eats every single day, several times a day, healthy food. Mm. And I'm sorry. So for me, it's another conception around health and, and food. So she, I, in very simply said, she's free to enjoy whatever she wants. Um, but with me, it will be vegetarian. With other people, it might be different. Um, and it's okay if she likes it. I'm not like, I'm not, I haven't got any other rules on that for now. Yeah. Mm, of course, okay. when she grows up, I will encourage, I will share with her my, um, how shall I say, perspective around the uh, um, animal products, around um, meat, around how it's made and all this, as soon as she can understand. However, she's, uh, she will be able to make her own choices based on this knowledge when the time comes. That's how mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. And the last question is, uh, what does it mean for you to be a mother? Whatever it tells you, you know, what, whatever, whatever thoughts come to you is there sure. for this question. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. That's a nice question. <laughs> um, being a mother would be accompanying a living being into a life experience the best way you can. 
but it's, obviously this means to every person that would be different some people the best way is making a lot of money so the child have enough uh prosperity around them and enough material needs covered for other people is having time giving them time time to be around them even if it means quitting work and then the, it's very different for everybody to do their best you know to accompany a child a, a living being into this world um for me it's just yes being kind of finding a balance where she can become uh, independent and have enough um have the have the capacity to tap into her inner powers to understand the reality she chose to live in uh, as best as possible. That's how wow. I would. Do. Yeah. Wow, that is so so inspiring. Okay, Maria, I'm so thank you so so much. It was super inspiring, super uplifting. <laughs> and uh, now towards the end, please tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're doing for a living, how you help people and what kind of services you provide. And then, sure. of course, we, we, we can also put your contact details below this video if people are interested. OK, so um, in, uh, I would say my current reality, I believe a lot in freedom. I believe a lot in freedom and then the power of the mind can lead us to do anything that we want. So for me, because I believe in freedom, I help other people to live in more freedom. Um, so that whether it is food freedom or financial freedom, because that's the two kind of um, areas where people more than likely get stuck sometimes. They think that they have to do a certain way to live in abundance or do a certain way to live in health. So I help with this. And um, so one of my work is to uh, help people through um, creating financial freedom. So that's how, what I would do with other people. I would basically give help other people reaching um, more freedom in their life. And this way, I also live in more freedom myself. I believe that this way I realized, doing this, I realized that there is no selling or really the more value you create for the world and the more you give, in other words, to others, you will always live in abundance. So now I spend a lot of my time do we, uh, doing a, a baby activities and entertainment and kids events because I have a baby, right? So I do that, but I don't even uh, do that for them. I wouldn't say it's not a business. So I do this as a volunteer. So I create this with my mom and with um, other people and invite other moms to uh, have a good time with the babies. So that's an activity I do because I have created kind of financial freedom in my life before. So that I live in abundance without having to do much. I would say I work less than an hour a day. I am the only one to provide for her financially and myself. Um, how else can I say? And it's possible to every mom or every parent. You don't have to go to a job. You don't have to quit everything. You can share um, your life with your child and still live in abundance. I live in London, so I don't even know prices here are expensive housing i mean it's one of the most expensive places in the world when it comes to housing and everything so um my service i don't really have services because i i if people ask me questions that i'm happy to answer i answer a lot of the questions in my youtube channel or by email um but then yes i believe uh i believe that whatever you give out there and whatever you do to share with the world is going to lead you to live in abundance anyway and mm -hmm. therefore you have freedom when you don't want to um, work or want to do things you can have a rest meditate for days if you want and if you want to do something then you are free to do it there shouldn't be anything like from nine till five i have to do this so that i, I have enough money to pay for rent no i don't believe in that then of course i have techniques when it comes to uh, creating let's say what people call passive income it sounds like really business oriented but it's not is just creating systems you know like you create a system of energy for yourself with a routine the morning you wake up you do meditation then you go for a walk then you come back you pamper yourself you have a shower then you put some incense some candles all this routine that you have for your health you can have exactly the same um linked with your prosperity and and having a healthy life in general and a healthy environment so you create a system of energy that helps you maybe online that's what i do and then you get um you get retributed from from that from life for that because you are you have the understanding of how a system of energy works so i basically mm -hmm. teach people how to create systems of energy both for their health and their prosperity i guess yeah mm -hmm. so i 
the other thing, you can see on my website a few things that I do that actually do uh, help on all the basis, the foundation, working on your mindset, working on your breathing, retraining the, the breath, working on uh, meditation, having a whole reprogramming your cells and your body and your mind through meditation session, visualization. This is really, really key, I believe. So I share about this, the foundations. Then the more, the deeper work I do maybe um, every other year, I do a course, a live course that I share with people. Um, and then, yeah, I answer questions for free on YouTube. I do events for free uh, in London. I do these things because mm. they're like, yeah, Maria. And for example, if a person has an interesting idea about becoming self-employed, about a particular activity that they would like to develop, but they don't really know how to do that, mm. would they could they come to you for coaching, Absolutely. for personal coaching, Absolutely. and then you will just follow them, you will explain different steps and work with that them personally? Possible. Absolutely, yes, that is possible. I can really help with that. Or even, yeah, even if they don't know the structure, but they just want a clarity or how to create to automate the activity automation is really important just like you create a routine for yourself in your life okay you have maybe a if you prefer, you want to sleep on a bed because it's better or with a certain mattress because you believe that it will be better for your back considering your type of health it's the same with um uh, work as well you may use a certain platform to do to automate uh, a need that you have so that you don't have to do it yourself why mm -hmm. get it when um a program a platform uh, a link could do that for yourself so yeah 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 you know I, I must tell you that i really feel that this energy of giving coming from you you know the and the, the unconditional giving and it is so so nice and you know just when you have this energy you know it's like it makes me really want to to come to you and learn from you you know because yeah. because yeah yeah because i i can feel this uh, sincere desire to help and to give you know, absolutely. and th th that is a super strong energy. And uh, yeah, and I absolutely share this um, idea with you that if you give, if you work in order to help people, regardless of whether it will bring me income or won't bring me income, you know, you will always live in abundance because that, that's how universe works. That is so true. I'm glad you, you clarify this. Giving is receiving. Giving is life. And you know, I have recently i was sharing on youtube i had this fridge and this um washing machine and all those toys and clothes that are unused and really really good quality that i was thinking about selling first and i thought wait no if i give it's less stress you don't have to put on that you don't have to do all this work and you're going to receive anyway so yeah. especially in today's world this new era coming the more yeah. you give you give is going to be the same as if you were selling but with less trouble less worry less stress and more joy and you're going to bring more joy to others around you it's exactly the same if you give you're going to receive anyway but because our mindset is focused on oh no so we have those limitations we prevent yeah. it we create a block but naturally if you just give you will receive it depends yeah. on your mindset absolutely. absolutely absolutely yeah and you know and every person has so many talents so many insights so many great ideas so it is so so important that each one of us really makes even small steps but to bring those ideas into fruition into reality absolutely yeah it doesn't have to be big at all absolutely no i started business class i had one person and <laughs> you know uh -huh. it, still do it and eventually something will happen realize that it's not about the um, how should i say no it's not about the appearance of what you you do it's about taking action you do that action there's only one person fine you don't care you you still give as if there were thousands people thousands of people around you and, it, and something's going to happen as a ripple effect more people will come maybe for a month you will only have one person if that's what you want to do you may yeah. not have any money because i was doing i still do that for free i don't charge you you want and, and but things are going to happen in your life that are going to be wow someone would say oh wait I have uh, this house that is not used. Go live there if you want. And that's exactly the type of place you want it. Or oh, someone's going to tell you, oh, I need this actually. Uh, can you help me? And they will give you a donation. That's going to be, wow, amazing. Things okay. will happen that will trigger and, and, and amplify your curiosity, your love for life, and the surprise and the excitement of life. That's what is lacking so much in our world. The excitement. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So what you have just said, in my opinion, it's the essence of life. You know, it's the yeah. by, by, by one of the biggest secrets of this universe. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's yeah. Have to be there because that's the only thing that that's what keeps you alive. That's what mm -hmm. keeps you. Alive. 
to nourishment. If the sparkle is dead, because everything is like preconceived and, and structured in a way that there's no surprise, no excitement, no yeah. nothing, you know, coming as magic in your life. There's no sparkle anymore. You, you like you live like that. And that's what happened with all those people going to work from nine till five, having having a stable income every month on the first of the month coming. That is yeah. too boring. Today's what you need you need this bring the sparkle back. Absolutely, Mariam. Yeah. So so maybe maybe we could think about another webinar like that, but on the subject of you know how to bring your ideas into fruition. So true. Yeah. But in this group, we have amazing, so many talented people in the field of health. You know, in the field of cleansing, in the field of spiritual development. So I think we can we can give uh, those people tools how to bring their ideas into fruition, how to help others. Because we are here to bring more light into the world, to make the world a better place. That's right. And when you say about fasting, and of course, I'm totally aware of that. You know, fasting is so much easier when you don't have to think that about fasting and planning it. Let me give you an example. It's like so like children as well. When you do something that you love, you forget about food. You forget about eating. Yeah. You do something that you love, you don't think about food. So imagine you do that every single day of your life ongoing. It might be something different, okay? Like you love to again for me, it's video creation, being with people that are like sharing, traveling. If you do these things ongoing, yeah, don't even think about like fasting will be so natural in your life. It will be your lifestyle. It'll be your lifestyle. That's yeah, what I mean. Then yeah, energy. Then yeah, you yeah. Energy. It's just that. Yeah, yeah Mariam. Yeah, and I must tell that you have a, an amazing YouTube channel. Very interesting. Very interesting content. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I also wrote you some other, the other day that, uh, you know, some time ago I was studying French and it really, oh. hel it, it really helped me because uh, you have lots of, uh, you have at least few videos where you have the same content in French and in English. So it's a paradise for every person who learns French. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah. I yeah. Know, French is hard. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, but then uh, you know, for, for now I, I, I haven't, you know, I, 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 I just have learned the basics, but uh, still, but it really, really helped me. So we will put uh, uh, below this video, we'll put the link to your YouTube channel and to your website. So okay. guys, if you want to contact Mariam, you're welcome. And yeah, so we are a little bit over an hour, so you probably have to go now. So, Mariam, thank you so much. It was so, so exciting to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And now we are going over to Rafaela. Rafaela is our... <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Beautiful interview. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Rafaela. So, Rafaela is our next speaker coming from Italy, and she's a life partner of Nicholas, right? Yes. We, we had Nicholas two weeks ago, and Rafaela, you are the mother of two teenage daughters, right? You have, uh, how old are they? Uh, Noemi, uh, Anna Mitraduci, uh, Noemi ha 17 anni e Giada ne ha 14. Microfono, Anna. Microfono. Yes, uh, Anna, you have to unmute yourself. Do you know how to... Noemi ah, okay. is 17 yeah. years old and Giada is 14. Wow, wow. That, that's great. So that's a great combination because uh, with Mariam, we talked about birth and, uh, you know, and uh, when you have a baby, but with um, Rafaela, we can talk about how to live with teenagers and combine yes. with this kind of fasting and pranic lifestyle. So Rafaela, please tell us, um, first of all, uh, um, what are you doing for living? Like, what's your lifestyle like? Qual è il tuo stile di vita, Raffaella? Cosa, cosa fai per vivere? Allora, la, la, la mia pratica essenziale è quella del respirianesimo. Uh, my essential practice is a, a breatharian. Mm -hmm. Sono facilitatrice di gruppi come Nicolas. I'm a facilitator of groups like Nicholas. Mi occupo di channeling. I'm also a channeler. Quando sono diventata madre eh, non conoscevo tutte queste realtà. When I was becoming a mother, I didn't know any of these realities. Ma per me una cosa è chiara. But one thing is really clear to me. Quando 
una donna decide di diventare madre vuol dire che una parte di lei ha deciso di espandere la coscienza. When a, a woman decides to become a mother, part of her uh, decides to expand uh, consciousness. Entra per nove mesi in connessione diretta con un'anima che è ancora in altri piani. As she enters in a, a um, total uh, um, uh, contact and consciousness with a being that it's in a different state, in different planes. Mm -hmm. Quindi si costringe di entrare in comunicazione con delle sfere totalmente differenti. So she decides to uh, uh, keep contact uh, in different uh, state of planes that are totally different from this reality here. Mm -hmm. Nel momento in cui sono nate, sono entrata in un processo di osservazione e ero affascinata di quello che eh, manifestavano queste creature. They, they were born, I entered in a state of observation which I was totally fascinated from these beings, what they were expressing. Uh, non nego che mi sento più giovane adesso rispetto a quando avevo 30 anni. <laughs> I, I have to say that I feel much younger now than uh, 20 uh, before having the children. Uh, mi, eh, mi sentivo appesantita a quei tempi. That time I felt kind of heavy. Fino al momento in cui scoprì l'alimentazione pranica. Until I discovered pranic uh, procession, um, pranic um, um, nutrition. E wow, oh, avevo intuito che era la libertà in assoluto. And there I had this um, uh, information that it was total freedom. Avevo una famiglia tradizionale ai tempi. My family, I come from a very traditional family. In, 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 All'improvviso ho smontato tutto, ho deciso di separarmi e conobbi Nicola. And suddenly I decided to interrupt everything, change my lifestyle, and then I met Nicolas. Eh, già prima vedevo che la mia vita era noiosa. My life before I decided, I realized it was really boring. Dicevo, ma io dovrei pensare solo a stare in cucina e cucinare, fare la spesa. Boh. So what's my life? Only to think about cooking, uh, going food shopping. What kind of life is that? Il cibo era un problema. Cosa preparare da mangiare? So it was a problem thinking about food, what to cook next, what to do. Quando sentì parlare del risperianesimo, mi si sono spalancate le porte. So when I heard about uh, Rotharian, like, wow, the doors opened. E mi misi subito in cammino. So I started to move towards that. Era il 2012. That was 2012. E l'informazione mi giunse grazie al channeling. And I got this information Uh, because I was doing channeling. Messaggi dove dicevano che l'essere umano doveva nutrirsi di prana. So from channeling, the, message, the messages that arrived from other planes was that uh, human beings can live uh, without food, but with this kind of um, uh, nutrition. La cosa che mi sorprese a quei tempi What really surprised me at that time che mentre le mie figlie mi lasciavano libera di sperimentare il cambiamento alimentare, whereas my daughters were leaving me free to experiment uh, different styles of eating or whatever, gli adulti che avevo intorno invece erano terrorizzati. All the adults that I had around me were really uh, petrified. Eh, e quindi fu un periodo abbastanza difficile per me. So it was a very difficult moment because Britarians, like, nobody knew about it, so they couldn't understand that. Come fu difficile anche abbastanza la mia separazione. And so was my separation very struggled. Perché parlavo di alimentazione pranica e di channeling ed ero entrata già in comunicazione con la gente. 
because I was talking about um, pranic nutrition and I, w I already entered in contact. Uh, con che cosa Raffaella sono entrata in contatto? Perché comunicavo già alla gente la, la notizia. I was communicating to everybody this, uh, the pranic nutrition, the vegetarian lifestyle. Ma cambiando il mio stile di vita già allora, But changing my lifestyle at that time, avevo un'energia tale, I had such an energy, uh, che la forza del guerriero veniva ancora più fuori. So uh, the strength of a, of a warrior was so strong in me. In dieci giorni trovai casa in affitto. In ten days I found a new house uh, to rent. E, con un, e io avevo un profilo di donna con figli e senza lavoro che non, per gli altri non avrei mai potuto trovarlo. And my, my public uh, profile of a woman who had no work and two children, I couldn't, it wasn't easy, you know, for people to find a, a, a rent that way. And I found it. Ma con l'alimentazione pranica, il se in connessione col pensiero creatore. So when you're doing pranic procession, uh, you're in contact with the, um, the creative uh, mind, the creative thought. Quindi invece di andare nel problema, sei già la soluzione. So instead of going into the problem, the solution is there. Sei la realizzazione. You are the realization of what, uh, what, you what you want. Quindi le mie figlie attualmente vivono due realtà. So my daughters are living two realities. Vivono la realtà tradizionale quando sono dal padre. They have traditional lifestyle with their father when they're living with their father. Quando sono con me sono libere. So when they're with me, they're free. È chiaro per me che non devo cambiare loro, ma devo continuare a lavorare su di me. So it's very clear for me that I don't have to change them, but I like to work on myself. Le lascio libere di scegliere intuitivamente. I let them free to uh, choose intuitively what they really want, what they want. They're free. Sia la tipologia di cibo e sia nell'orario. Uh, regarding food lifestyle and their uh, timings, um, our timings, timing in life. Quindi noi non abbiamo orari canonici e, e orari prefissati per il cibo. We don't have fixed timing for food. Ogni tanto mi piace condividere con loro. Sometimes I like to uh, share with them. E sta diventando sempre più raro. It's becoming more and more rare. Uh, per condividere intendo condividere il, pasto, il cibo solido. Uh, regarding share, sharing food, I mean solid food. E l'ultima volta che ho condiviso con loro è stata uh, a Capodanno. The last time we shared a solid food together was at New Year's Eve. E sia chiaro, non è un problema al cibo. And uh, food is really not a problem. E se mi chiedono di preparare qualcosa, non ho problemi a prepararla, la preparo semplicemente. If they ask me for some special solid food, I'm willing and very happy to prepare for them. Ma quello che vedo che stanno diventando velocemente indipendenti. But what I'm noticing that they're becoming very quickly so independent. Perché la via del respirianesimo è la via dell'indipendenza. Because the way of vegetarian way is the way of uh, independence, freedom. Siamo esseri autonomi e completi. We are uh, beings uh, of um, self-freedom beings and complete beings. Ho sperimentato molto la, la relazione tra me e le mie figlie, ovviamente, in questi ultimi anni. Uh, in these last years, I've experimented many things between me and my children. E se mi 
permettete racconto un episodio interessante uh, I would like to uh, talk about a very interesting episode di solito lo racconto anche ai gruppi eh, che, fa, che vivono il processo di alimentazione pranica. In passato la mia figlia più piccola in the past, the smallest, my smallest daughter, eh, prese un virus She uh, got a, a kind of a virus che le generava vomito. That generated her to, uh, to uh, throw up, to vomit. E non si fermava. But it was unstoppable. Entrai in osservazione. So I entered in an observation. Quello che notai è che se io mangiavo cibo solido, lei peggiorava. What I have noticed that when I was eating solid food, she was getting worse. Quando io mi rimettevo in cammino col prana, lei iniziava a migliorare. When I decided to uh, stay to pranic nutrition, she would feel better. In questa fase di osservazione, In this state of observation, la portai anche da un amico osteopata. I took her to an osteopath doctor. E mi disse, guarda, me la devi portare una seconda volta. Please take her, take her here again, a second time. E io dissi, ok. And I said, yeah, of course. Ma non gli dissi quello che stavo notando io. But I didn't tell him what I was uh, uh, taking notice of. Il giorno dopo, the day after, mi mesi in, mi mesi in cammino col prana, I've decided to, uh, to uh, do a pranic procession more. Eh, con l'aiuto un po' di liquidi per bilanciare. I help myself with some liquids to balance. <coughs> non avevo limiti di tempo. I had no limits of time. E già il terzo giorno. And already on the third day. Mia figlia si sveglia la mattina. My daughter wakes up in the morning. Venne da me. She came to me. E mi disse, sto benissimo. And she said, she said to me, I feel great. <laughs> e io continuai il cammino. So I continued my process. Quindi osservazione, observation, intenzione, intention, e azione, and action. Wow. E la relazione è molto uh, stretta tra genitore e figlio. Um, the relationship between um, Mother and, do and daughter and child is very strong. Is very, there's a great connection. Fino ai sette anni i figli sono proprio nel campo aurico della madre. Until seven years old, they're still in the auric field of the mother. Poi pian pianino si distaccano, ma il legame rimane sempre. Then slowly uh, they, they detach, but um, the, the relation still remains. La gente mi, una delle domande più, che viene, vengono poste più spesso. Uh, one of the questions that are mostly uh, asked. È quando chiedono, quanto mangi? They ask me, how much do you eat? E io rispondo ovviamente. <laughs> Surely I answer. Ma quello che per me più conta. What really counts for me. Non è tanto il numero dei passi. It's not how many um, times we eat. Ma è la mia connessione. But it's my connection to food. La mia, stab la mia stabilità. My stability, my balance. Io viaggio spesso. I, I travel lots. E 
e quindi mi piace sentire il mio corpo di luce. So I love to feel my um, light, uh, the light of my body, the enlightenment of my body. E, e agisco col mio corpo di luce anche quando sono lontana, ma riesco ad avvolgere anche le mie figlie, perché non ha limiti di spazio. So, um, using my, um, my light body, my enlightenment body, I can surround my daughters even when I am away with light. Per me questo è fondamentale. This is the fundamental uh, truth for me. Non so se ci sono domande, Ari. Are there any questions, Ari? I wanted to ask how they like, for example, when her daughter asks for particular kinds of food, it might, even if it might be unhealthy food, how does she feel about it? And does she allow them to have, for example, if they ask asking for cake, for pizza, for whatever, if they do. So how does she feel about that? And if she allows them to have those foods? Uh, quando le tue figlie ti chiedono, le tue figlie ti chiedono cibi, anche cibi, diciamo, così non detti sani, che può essere pizza, quello che è, e tu come la prendi? Tu glielo consenti? Co come ti comporti? La legge fondamentale è quella della libertà. The, the law, the fundamental law is freedom. E non posso obbligare gli altri. I cannot obligate. Others. Devono mm. sperimentare. They need to experiment. E ti parlo per esperienza, Ricky. And I can tell you this from experience. Perché in passato. Because in the past. Avevo cambiato la loro dieta. I changed their diet. Era costrizione. And that was construction, constriction, e obligation. E la costrizione è l'opposto della gioia. And constriction is exactly the opposite of joy. Mm. Yeah. Vedo che, eh, quello che vedo è che si bilanciano bene. Uh, puoi spiegarmi bene questo? E si bilanciano nelle quantità. Uh, what I can tell you is that they balance in, in a very uh, uh, graceful way. Mm -hmm. Il mio compito, uh, my duty, è quello di usare, saper usare il pensiero. Is to be able and uh, know how to use my uh, thinking, my thought. Questo ne parla la fisica quantistica. This is, uh, mm, uh, the quantic uh, physic is, uh, usually talks about this. Mm -hmm. Se io inizio a dire a loro che è cibo spazzatura. If I say to my children, this is junk food. Quell'informazione finisce in quel cibo. That information will go into that food. E quel mm. cibo entra nelle mie figlie. And that food goes into their in my daughter's bodies. Yeah. Se, se io introduco amore, quello finisce nelle mie figlie. If I introduce love, that will go into my daughters. Mm. E attenzione. And one se thing. Io intro, se io introduco amore là. If I introduce love there. Me lo faccio circolare anche dentro di me. It also encircles my body. Wow. E, mi, e mi sento sazia. And I feel um, uh, full. Mm. Io wow. abito in centro città, eh? Take notice, I live in the center of the city. Esco di casa e c'è pieno di trattorie, di ristoranti. And uh, it's full of restaurants and pubs, everything, everything that is food. Yeah. La stessa... La stessa tecnica io la uso quando vedo i piatti delle persone. The same technique I use when I see what people are eating. Invio pensiero saggio. I deliver to them a, 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 a wise thought. I emanate that. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, Ari. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so for example, uh, when you see people eating, do you emanate towards them some kind of thinking ideas or some kind of intention? Like, what do you usually do? Could you please elaborate on that? Quando tu vedi le persone che mangiano questi piatti, che tipo di visualizzazione gli mandi? Quali sono i tuoi pensieri che gli mandi? In canale o in canale prana direzione attraverso il chakra del cuore? Uh, either I channel uh, prana, I in channel, channel prana, and uh, from the heart chakra I send that love. Mm -hmm. Verso proprio il piatto della persona. Uh, at that, in that food. Mm -hmm. I send Oppure... Oppure guardo il piatto con gli occhi. Or I look at that dish, at that, um, yes, that, that food. Mm -hmm. E introduco col pensiero delle frasi. And I introduce with the thought some sentences. Wow. Può, essere, può essere io sono abbondanza o, o io sono pienezza. Uh, for example, I am abundant. I'm full. I'm uh, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And you are doing it just in order to help people, just in order to make change in lives of those people? That, that is your intention? E la tua intenzione è quello di fare portare un cambiamento per aiutare le persone? Um, innanzitutto la mia intenzione è quella di essere cosciente che onde pensiero emanare. Uh, my first intention is to be conscious of what kind of thoughts I emanate. Mm -hmm. It is very important because it can change your own reality doing this. My fundamental action is to conduct people to prana. Mm. Eh, perché sei connesso con la coscienza. Because you're connected with the higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. eh, la elaborazione dei dati è molto rapida. To elaborate, elaboration of the information is really quick. Mm -hmm. Nell'arco di pochi secondi sai come agire. In, like in few seconds you know how to act and react sei centrato nella via del cuore dell'amore you're totally centered in the path of uh, of the heart of the of love mm -hmm. quindi si tende a innalzare le vibrazioni non abbassarle so you tend to elevate vibrations not to bring them down quindi più siamo è meglio è <laughs> the more we are, the best, the merrier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, that is wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, the next question is, um, when you started with your pranic journey, how old were your daughters? And how did you explain to them those principles? How did you convey those ideas to them? And what was their reception? Of, of those ideas. Uh, allora, uh, mm, Raffaella, quando tu hai iniziato il tuo processo pranico, quanti anni avevi tu, quanti anni avevano le bambine e come hai potuto trasmettere questo tuo oh, percorso alle tue figlie? Come com è, com è andata? Allora, quando eh, iniziai a cambiare alimentazione avrò avuto 35-36 anni. So when I decided just to change the uh, quality of food, um, I was about mm. 35, 36 years old. Uh, poi feci il mio processo dei 21 giorni nel 2016. And then in 2016, I started my 21-day pro 21 process, uh, pranic process. Con le figlie è stato molto naturale. With my daughters, it was uh, really natural. 
eh, avevo da guarire da qualcosa, da qualche patologia? I needed to uh, recover um, from some, some pathologies. E quindi quella era un'ottima spiegazione. So that was a good uh, explanation. Ma eh, i bambini lasciano naturalmente liberi gli altri. But, you know, children really, uh, it's natural for them to leave everybody free. Loro mi, mi dicono sempre, fai quello che vuoi. <laughs> They always tell me, do what you want to do. Poi ogni tanto mi chiedono, che cosa fai oggi? Mangi solido o no? <laughs> And sometimes they ask me, what are you doing today? Are you going to eat solid or not? <laughs> depends, depends. <laughs> okay. Depends. Okay, so how old were your daughter back then when you started your pranic journey? E quindi quanti anni avevano le tue figlie oh. quando tu hai iniziato questo viaggio pranico? Allora, quando feci il processo, la mia seconda figlia aveva 11 anni. So, when I started my first process, uh, my second daughter was no, 11 no, years old. My la, first... La, yes, the first the daughter. Was, the oldest one was 11 years old. Quindi qualche anno prima. So, uh, come qualche anno prima? I, iniziai a cambiare per arrivare al prana so, qualche anno prima. Uh, some years before my um, oldest daughter was 11, um, I started changing a style of food life. Mm. E poi il tuo processo pranico quanti anni aveva lei? 11. 11 e la più piccola ne aveva 9 e mezzo. Ok, so then when I started my first process, my first pranic process, the oldest was 11 and the other one was 9. Mm -hmm. Yes, yesterday uh, is beautiful day. Ok. <laughs> well, ho, rice ho ricevuto una, una proposta, un invito. Yesterday was a fantastic day. I received uh, an invitation. Proprio dalla, dalla mia figlia, di, la diciassettenne. The, the, el, the oldest daughter, 17 years old. Mi chiede mm -hmm. di andare in giro con lei e le, e le sue amiche. And she asked me if we can go and have a roundabout with her friends. Mm -hmm. Ho detto, ma come? Vuoi andare in giro con la mamma? A 17 oh, anni. What? what? You want to go around with your mother and your friends? And you were 17 years old. Lei mi dice, sì mamma, perché tu non te ne rendi conto, sei totalmente diversa dalle altre. Because, you know, mom, you're so, you don't realize it, but you're so different from the other mothers. Mm -hmm. Energia, gioia. <laughs> uh, energy and joy. Yes. So when you have to meet other let's say, other parents whose vibrations are lower than yours. What kind of inner work do you do there in order to stay balanced and in order to help them as well? Allora, quando tu ti incontri con altre madri che hanno ovviamente una mentalità diversa, hanno energie più basse, e, con, con, e ci sono i, i, le figlie, i bambini, e cosa fai tu... Oh, interiormente per alzare queste energie, per cambiare queste energie. Agisco molto dentro di me. I act a lot within, within myself. Dopodiché, uh, in base ai discorsi, and um, after focusing within myself, uh, depending on what is being said, what they are doing and thinking, poi cerco la parola giusta per iniziare a trasformare quel pensiero. And then I use the right word to start transforming that thought. Quindi comunque un seme attraverso la parola io lo lancio. So anyway, a little seed with, with the word, a little seed I am tossing into that direction. Sta diventando sempre più raro avere comunque rapporti con le altre mamme perché sono ormai grandi. Uh, honestly, I'm having le less contacts with mothers now 
with the mothers of uh, of these children because my daughters are really becoming uh, um, older and uh, anche independenti, vero? Yes. And, and, and quite independent. They are really freestyle. Mm -hmm. eh, loro si sentono adulte. <laughs> they, they think of themselves as adults. Mm. Eh, eh, Ari, che lo sai la mia seconda figlia che scuola ha scelto quest'anno? <laughs> you know, Ari, what my second daughter decided to choose this year, my her what? school, per, div per diventare chef di cucina. <laughs> She wants to become a, a chef. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is so funny. That is so funny. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And you know, Rafaela, because I, I can feel that you, are, that you are really good in dealing with different kinds of people. I can feel it by your energy. And maybe you could share from your, from your experience. Uh, when you meet low vibrational people in general, people who are all in fears, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, pandemics that are going on, for example, or any other kind of fears, how do you stay balanced? And also, how can you help those people to get higher a little bit? Hey, Raffaella, I lo sento that you have this energy that you can contact and mescolate, diciamo così, con varie tipologie di esseri, ma in questo momento che la gente ha molta energia bassa, per esempio, eh, parlando di, in questo momento del Covid, per cui chi ha paura, chi vive in una certa maniera, come, come muovi tu uh, questa energia per uh, elevare le vibrazioni? <ride> È molto semplice per quanto mi riguarda. It's very, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. Proprio perché lavoro col mio corpo di luce. Because I work a lot with my light being. Mm -hmm. Quindi già inizio così. And this is my starter. C'è una parte di me che è sempre più conscia che il silenzio è d'oro. There is a part of me that is always more conscious that uh, silence is like gold. C'è la nostra mente invece che fa difficoltà a concepire questo. Whereas our mind, our mental, uh, has a lot of difficulty to understand this. Mm -hmm. Quindi si entra nello stato che si fa di meno, ma si è molto più presenti. So we enter in the state that we do less but we are more present. Mm. È molto delicato questo periodo. This period is uh, very delicate. Perché basta una parola sbagliata che si entra nel conflitto. <laughs> so, one wrong word is enough to enter in a conflict. Mm -hmm. E quindi è meglio silenzio. <laughs> so, the best thing is silent and the body of light. <laughs> okay. in, in passato c'è stata una saggia guida che mi dice... In the past, uh, a, a wise uh, body di guida di luce. Sì. Uh, um, uh, a, a wise uh, guide, a, a spiritual guide from, from another plane of... Uh, mm -hmm. of uh, another plane. Yeah. E, e mi disse, ne basta uno in un villaggio. And uh, this guide said to me, one is enough in a village. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> yeah, one is enough. So, so what, what is the deeper meaning of that? What did he mean by saying that? Cosa si intendeva? Si pure per me questa era una domanda. Cosa intendeva questa, uh, questa guida? Uno è sufficiente nel villaggio. Cosa, qual era il concetto di questo? Perché una persona che cambia, espande la propria coscienza. Ok, one person that can expand the consciousness. Inizia mm -hmm. a essere un... Um, un canale di informazione particolare. Starts to uh, expand in, um, uh, a channel of information. Mm -hmm. Emana onde di energia 
that emanates uh, uh, waves of energy. E anche per questo uno dei motivi And this is one of the reasons che non ci sono comunità praniche. <laughs> that there are not uh, um, pranic communities. Perché dobbiamo essere sparsi in tutta la terra. <laughs> Because we have to be around uh, uh, um, spa, uh, in uh, the whole planet. Mm -hmm. No, ci sono le antenne che funzionano bene perché sono pulite, no? <laughs> uh, the antennas, you know, the, the, the waves of the antennas are so clean, these channels are so clean. Mm -hmm. quindi, can... quindi riconosci immediatamente con chi puoi parlare e con chi è meglio stare zitto. <laughs> and this way you can recognize who you can speak to and with whom you, the silent is the best way. Comunque, yeah. Rick, ci sono, yes, ci sono delle madri che mi conoscono molto bene, sanno quello che faccio. Eh. Uh, there are some mothers that they, they know very well and they know what I do. Mm -hmm. Conoscono anche Nicholas. <laughs> they, they know Nicholas so much, very well. Yeah, so basically, when you say that One person, there is one person in the village is enough, doesn't basically mean that one person can really change the situation, can really change the world with his or her intentions. That's, that's the deeper meaning of that. Allora, tu eh, intendi, uh, per esempio, che una persona in un villaggio uh, che può emanare questa energia può Uh, cambiare eh, molto in, in, in un posto per cui una persona può già creare un'espansione? Se, eh, se ha preso già connessione con la fiducia di questa energia, sì. What I'm saying is that if this person is really connected with the energy, with this pranic energy and has faith in this, believes in it, Yes, it can expand, it can move. L'essere mm. umano oggi vuole eh, vedere con gli occhi fisici. The humankind today needs to see with his physical eyes. Quindi, se vedo una persona ferma, me non far nulla. So, if, if with the physical eyes sees a person who's there, who's not moving forward, it's not worth it. It's Ma like se, tu, se tu ci pensi, Arik, l'alimentazione pranica, um, pranic food, mm -hmm. ti porta a star fermo. It makes you stand still. Non devi più lavorare per guadagnare per il cibo. Uh, you don't need to work for food. <laughs> gira intorno al cibo. That's right. Everything is, uh, goes around about for food. Yeah. Eh, poi ti vedono in faccia e allora sono le persone che ti dicono ma cosa fai per essere così? And then they, they, look, they look at you on the face, they look at you and they say what do you do to be like this? Allora parlo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I talk about it. <laughs> right. Right. Wow. Wow. That, that is amazing. Okay. Um, okay. Now we have one question, one question here in the chat. I will read it. So, um, so it says that when she received the messages that we can live without food, uh, did that include water? Was the message that we, that we can live without water? Uh, does water also mean food? Allora, quando hai ricevuto dalla tua guida che possiamo vivere senza cibo, era anche inclusa l'acqua? L'acqua intesa come cibo? Allora, ci sono già, eh, Nicolas ha fatto una conferenza, avrà già spiegato sicuramente. Uh, Nicolas uh, did a conference uh, regarding this. Mm -hmm. uh, ci sono già pranici, eh, ci sono sempre stati e ci sono tuttora dei pranici che manifestano lo stato a dei livelli eccelsi. There, uh, they were and there still are pranics uh, who manifest in, in incredible um, 
uh, pranic, pran uh, breatharians. Mm -hmm. Sono dei casi ancora molto rari. They're really still uh, kind of rare cases. Eh, siamo in fase di transizione ora. In this time of life, we're still in a phase of transition. E non possiamo sapere quanto durerà questa transizione. And we don't know yet how long this transition will last, will be. Mm -hmm. Quindi ce la viviamo... <laughs> la viviamo, scusa, non mi è arrivata la parola. Amor, amorevolmente. So we live through this with love. Mm -hmm. Già se ridimensioniamo le, le, le sostanze, grande cosa. <laughs> If we start to ridimension substances, it's already a big deal. Mm -hmm. Per rispondere, sì, sarà è, è già possibile stare senza acqua. It is, it is already possible to live without water. Ma bisogna stare molto attenti. But you have to be very careful. E rispettare il proprio corpo fisico anche. Uh, respect uh, your, our own physical body because we're all different, no? Mm -hmm. Right. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys, do you have any questions for Rafaela? You can unmute yourself and ask your questions if you have any. Ci sono dei bretariani, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look, the bretarian people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have a question probably. Io avrei una domanda. Okay. Anna, allora. puoi tradurre Adrian? Translate for you. Io sono francese, ma posso parlare in italiano? Ok, ok. Allora, io allatto il mio figlio di nove mesi. E... Anna, puoi, uh, one moment, se mai Anna puoi tradurre per gli altri in inglese? Ok, uh, so I'll translate what you're saying in English. I... Uh... I am uh, breastfeeding my child um, from nine months. E mio marito segue un processo cranico da cinque mesi. And my husband is following since five months a pranic process. E mi piacerebbe molto accompagnarlo, ma non I so se posso allattando. I would like to do the same uh, and do pranic process, but I don't know if I can while I'm breastfeeding. Ok, dipende uh, da quale stile di vita ora hai alimentare. Allora, um, mangio... Eh, Adriane, così traduce Anna. Oh, scusa. Uh, 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 it depends on what kind of uh, food lifestyle you're... You're doing at the moment? Mangio essenzialmente frutta e verdura. Essentially, I eat fruit and vegetables. Ok. Quello che è eh, più corretto, secondo me, what is correct according to me, è eh, passare a un pasto a liquido is to go for one liquid food. Quindi uh, ridurre il solido gradatamente. Uh, you can reduce the solid slowly, gradually. Okay. Possono, possono passare dei mesi. It, it might take you a few months. Perché se acceleri troppo. Because if you, if you accelerate too much, le tossine possono entrare nel latte. Uh, the toxins, when you're, when you're detoxing, it might be going into your milk. Uh, grazie. Era la mia paura. Eh, può essere. <laughs> yeah, this was my thought. Grazie mille, Raffaella. Grazie a te, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you, Raffaella. Ok, good. Um, 
We have another question in the chat, but maybe guys, you want to ask uh, more questions live, so you can just unmute yourself. If not, I will just read this question from the chat. Okay, let's go to the chat. Hey, hey Rafaela, they say that fat cells produce estrogen. Did you ever have problems with female hormones and body mass weight? So can you repeat that again? Yeah, yeah. They say that fat cells produce estrogen. I'm just reading whatever is written here. Okay. Can, can I, can I? Le, le, mm -hmm. le cellule yeah. grasse produce, producono estrogeni, yes? Did you ever have problems with female hormones and body mass weight? Hai mai avuto problemi con uh, il, um, gli ormoni femminili e la, uh, il peso um, della massa? Presumo sia massa muscolare. Sì, massa corporea. Sì, ho avuto un po' di problemi. Yes, I had some problems. Io mi ricordo che con le gravidanze si era alterato la, 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 si erano alterati i miei ormoni. When uh, I was expecting a baby, my hormones were altered. Sono sempre stata magra. I've always been uh, very slim. Uh, ho fatto tanto sport da ragazza. I did a lot of sport when I was, uh, when I was young, when I was a kid. E dopo la gravidanza però un pochino di massa mi era rimasta e non, non scendeva. But after delivering... Uh, some um, mass uh, remained and I could not um, lose it. E, e anche il mio stato ormonale era alterato. And so was my hormone uh, state altered. E tra l'altro lo vedevo anche col ciclo mestruale. And also my period, my menstrual period uh, was different. E diciamo che sono andata a risanare molto. So I can say that after, with the um, uh, pranic process, uh, uh, my, my body, a lot of stuff uh, became uh, healthier. Per esempio, le, il mio ciclo mestruale si è ridotto di tanto. So my menstrual period uh, is now uh, reduced a lot. Perché avevi molta, molta... Um, sì, per... mi, durav mi duravano 5 o 6 giorni. Before that, they lasted about five, six days and quite strong, strong bleeding. Adesso, and, mi, dur adesso mi durano due giorni. And now I have them for like two days. E mi sento ancora in trasformazione. And I'm still transforming. E, e poi c'è un cambio di prospettiva, eh? And also there is a change of perspective. Perché si parte sempre dal corpo fisico, è la nostra tendenza. So it starts with the changing of the physical body, this is our tendency. Io adesso amo prendere connessione col mio spirito e quindi so già che il mio corpo si modella grazie al mio spirito. And after that, now I like to keep connection with my uh, uh, spiritual body, with my uh, light body, body of light. And I know that I can change my body uh, by, by thought, by creating it. Okay, Keita. <laughs> mm. And this is truly happening. Wow, amazing, amazing. Now, Rafaela, because you facilitate pranic processes, I wanted to ask you if, uh, for example, if a woman wants to have a baby, um, would you recommend that she, and she also wants to do this pranic process, would you recommend her to go and do pranic process before that or after that? Allora, senti, Raffi, se una persona, una donna, um, vorrebbe rimanere incinta, decide di, 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 di mettersi in questo stato, e tu consigli di fare il processo pranico prima o, uh, o dopo? Ah, oh, per me prima. <laughs> Before. Oh, assolutamente. And why? <laughs> why? What are the reasons? 
No, no, scusa, la domanda forse era questa, se consigli di fare prima un, un processo pranico e, e, poi, e poi mettersi in, in movimento per avere un figlio? Assolutamente, yes, of course. Yeah, be before. Before. Yeah. And why? Perché? Oh. Faccio l'elenco delle motivazioni. Uh, I, can do a bit, I can do a list of all the motivations. Ok. Vai. Intanto, intanto una donna si guarisce fisicamente, quindi il corpo è pronto ad accogliere. Firstly, a woman uh, heals uh, physically, so the body is ready to, to contain. Mm. Poi c'è l'elaborazione delle emozioni. Then the elaboration of, of the emotion. Mm -hmm. Ven vengono trasmutate forme pensiero. Form thoughts are transmuted. Ok. Quindi si entra nello stato di amore, di gioia. So you enter in the state of uh, love and joy. Wow. E poi una donna è molto, molto intuitiva. And then a woman becomes very intuitive. Ma mm -hmm. se pulisce ancora di più i propri canali... È ancora and more, intuitiva. <laughs> and the more she uh, cleans her channels, she will be more intuitive. Mm -hmm. eh, a me sono arrivate alcune informazioni di cosa, di chi potrebbe essere una donna. Uh, to me, uh, I've, I received uh, some information of what a woman can be. Mm -hmm. Ma non l'ho ancora sperimentato su di me e non so se lo sperimenterò. <laughs> But I didn't yet experiment it on myself and I don't know if I will. Però potrebbe, una donna potrebbe arrivare al punto Finisci la frase? Che prende connessione con l'anima ancora prima di rimanere incinta. So the information that I received is that a woman may take a connection, can have connection with this being, uh, the soul, the, the soul, soul, che si vuole incarnare. soul before, before coming into incarnation, before actually mm -hmm. receiving. In, yeah, wow. In stato di coscienza. This is the state, state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Perché questi, questi incontri arrivano già, solo che noi non ce lo ricordiamo. Because uh, these encounters already uh, uh, have been, but we don't, we don't remember, we don't recall. Ok. Quindi tante cose potrebbero cambiare. So many things can actually change. Wow. <laughs> Questa è una, è una piccola parte. <laughs> This is only a little thing. Ok. Ok, wow, that is amazing. Thank you. Ok, uh, Raffaella, and uh, ok, guys, first of, first of all, do you have any more questions for Raffaella? You're welcome to unmute yourself and ask if you have any. Ok, Raffaella, then I would love to ask you probably the last question for this webinar, and uh, it's the same question as I asked our previous speaker. So what does it mean for you to be a mother? Whatever, what, you can just elaborate on that, whatever it means to you. Allora, ti farò la stessa domanda, questa probabilmente è l'ultima domanda di questo seminario, e ti farò la stessa domanda che ho fatto um, a Miriam. Che cos'è per te essere madre? Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lo stato è eh, l'amore incondizionato, eh, lo stato che si avvicina di più all'amore incondizionato. It is the state that is the most nearest to unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Come madre ti fai da parte e doni tutto ai, a, a altre anime. And as um, a mother you give all you can, everything, to another uh, soul. Mm -hmm. E nel dono. Uh, il dono, uh, the, the, um, the gift, è il, è il principio su cui si basa l'universo. The gift is the principle on which the universe is, uh, relies on. Uh -huh. is based nella, on. Nella, nella Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, c'è un 
un, è un piccolo versetto che parla del, dei pranici. There's a little verses that talks about the pranics. Mm -hmm. e che sono coloro che versano agli altri l'energia vitale. There are these people that reverse to others vital energy. Lo stato di madre è ancora più amplificato questo. And being a mother, this is amplified. Wow. Mm. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, Raffaella, thank you so, so much for this amazing interview. Eh, Raffaella, grazie tantissimo per questa intervista. And uh, thank I just, you. Yeah, and I just want to ask you if you have any services that you provide, because we usually, um, of course, if people are, if our speakers are interested, we usually put their contact details uh, below the video so that people can contact them and maybe take different, take from them coaching or any other services. So, are there any services that you personally provide to the people? Allora, um, voglio sapere se tu uh, che servizi dai eh, perché molte persone possono essere interessate. Che cosa offri? Allora, organizzo con Nicolas gruppi per l'alimentazione pranica. I organize with Nicolas uh, groups for pranic procession. In presenza e online. In presence and online. Agisco col channeling. I do channeling. E, e propongo anche la lettura de, dell'aura. And I also do auric reading. Mm, wow. Eh, qui. Quindi questo è il mio pacchetto. <laughs> my, this is my package. <laughs> that, is, that is amazing. So could you, could you please ex explain more about auric reading? So can you, uh, can you spot a different uh, physical conditions that are um, not so good uh, with people or their emotional conditions? So what is it exactly? Allora, uh, Raffaella, potresti spiegare un pochino uh, la lettura aurica? Che ha a che fare con, il, con uh, problemi fisici, con problemi emotivi? Oh yes, posso vedere problemi fisici e forme pensiero. Uh, with auric reading I can see um, physical problems and form thoughts. Quindi mm. posso dare anche degli attrezzi attraverso visualizzazioni per trasmutare forme pensiero. So I can give tools uh, to uh, change and transmute uh, situations like that. Mm. Wow, wow, that's amazing. So maybe maybe we can have another webinar just dedicated to the <laughs> subject because, uh, yes. because it is so, so interesting, you know, it's so, so interesting. Yeah, but meanwhile, we will put your contact details below this video so people will be able to contact you if they're interested in chronic process or getting your personal coaching, you know, or auric reading and the other things that you are doing. Yeah, so it's going to be amazing. Okay, okay, thank you so, so much, Raffaella. Thank you, Raffaella. After, after okay. Melodici. Yeah. Thank you, Ari, thank you all, uh, everyone. Yeah, and Anna, and thank you so much for translating. Thank you so, so much, it's so, so fun. I thank you, and mm -hmm. really, I enjoyed uh, listening uh, to many things. Uh, Raffaella, I know, so I know what she does. Yeah. But uh, I didn't know about Miriam. It's really beautiful, beautiful to know that we are these wonderful people on this planet. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you want, Anna, I can, I can add you to our fasting group because we have these kind of webinars every week, actually. So you will be able to attend. So when I'm free, I, I love to join because it's very nurturing. Yeah, yeah, so you can take my phone number from uh, Raffaella and uh, just send yeah. me a WhatsApp message. What, what is your mother tongue? Is your mother tongue uh, Italian? Uh, I'm actually a big mixture because I was born in Italy, then I grew up in America, and now it's many, many years I lived between Italy and Thailand. Mm, I see. 
So it's kind of mucked up there, but it's okay. It's, it's just that it was a little bit rusted in these last two years because of uh, uh, these restrictions. So I haven't been traveling for these la latest two years. Yeah. So this is a wonderful way to pick up, again, language. And I would, as I was saying to Rafaela, the changing of words, the quality of words change the quality of your vibrations. Yeah. Because words are energy. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Okay, so thank well, you thank so, you so much. much. And have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.